And welcome back. I can tell you from personal experience, judo is a big sport in Japanese American communities, but Yoshi Uchida took his personal journey and made it a global one. Joining us once again is Yoshi Uchida. Let's start with your first black belt. And you know, because you obviously turned that into an, uh, a very high level of achievement in judo, but at the very beginning, what made you start judo? Well, I was 10 years old when I started, mm -hmm. and I really was not that much in, in, into judo because I was not that strong. But as time went on, uh, but, or my parents insisted that I go to uh, judo. Mm -hmm. So uh, with time, I learned uh, some techniques, and it was started to become fun. But it was sort of uh, ended uh, in 1941 when I was drafted and I spent uh, four years in the military. And in 19, uh, of course I was at San Jose State, but after I came back in 1946 and started school again. And what was your judo experience then? You came back and how did you resume judo? Well, the, um, the athletic director uh, 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 remembered my helping out in the judo, mm -hmm. so he asked me if I would continue, and I said, "No, oh, that would be happy because uh, although I got I only only got paid uh, thirty three dollars, it was it paid my way through school, <laughs> so <laughs> I was happy with it." How did you become uh, involved in coaching? Well, as I was uh, teaching uh, judo, I f uh, they, these were for police majors, but the techniques that they they were already taught, were, it was just didn't uh, uh, seem right to me, and I would uh, purposely go up uh, behind some police students and say, "Okay, now what are you going to do? I got a gun on your back," and they would they would uh, they would whip around and I would just have a pencil in my hand. And then I said, here's the gun right here. And I, they said, oh, well, you see, you guys don't do any moving. You just stand there and just twist. And you think that's, that you can do something, but that's not the way it is. So I said, I think we will start judo. And we practiced judo, and they uh, really enjoyed it. And. Uh, the first day I had my class, there was about 28 students, and all from the Pacific Theater. So they had been fighting uh, the Japanese, and uh, they looked at me and says, Are you mean to tell me you're going to teach our class? I said, yes. He said, oh, you're, you're too small. We'll kill you. And I said, no, you won't. <laughs> and this is, <laughs> so they, said, now what are you going to do? And they started sw swinging me all around the place. And I, I was hor laid, uh, horizontal with the, with the mat there. And then once when he sto stopped, I knew he would be unbalanced. So I really threw this big 250-pounder. And then the fellow, he hit so hard that he was, he was uh, just gasping for breath. I got up and says, man, this is judo, and that was the start of my career. <laughs> Very practical start there. <laughs> Give me an idea now. You were able to take that, and you were able to expand judo into the collegiate world and then into the Olympic world. You really were dedicated to making sure that it went from being sort of a martial art kind of thing <clears throat> to a sport uh, by creating the weight divisions that you yeah, did. Yeah. Why was it important to you that judo be a sport? Well, if we are going to push sport, uh, judo forward, it had to be a sport. It was known as a martial arts, and everything was a martial art. And uh, so, so students, uh, a couple of them came up to me and says, hey, coach, you know, I was down at the Civic Auditorium in San Jose here, and uh, I saw a boxer and, uh, and a wrestler, and they, there's an, against a uh, judo black belt, and they just beat the hell out of him. He says, now why should I take your judo class? And I said, well, that's because uh, th that was uh, uh, a, uh, uh, just a, uh, ex 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 what would you say, uh, a uh, exper uh, not experiment, but the, just an exhibition. Mm -hmm. He says, so uh, 
I, I guess we, that we should stop, stop that. So in order to stop this, I knew that you had to go through some AAU sports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I asked uh, a man uh, at the uh, University of California named Henry Stone, who was in charge of the physical education and also the wrestling. He, he, he commanded a um, lot of respect and had a lot of power. So I told him about the situation, and he said, Yoshi, you'll never be able to f uh, stop that. I said, why not? Because judo is not a sport. And he said, it's not? He said, yeah. So you have to, you have to get judo recognized as a sport. And that's why uh, we started to push f to change the weight system. Well, you broke a lot of barriers that way. <laughs> and also, too, what I appreciate is the fact that at the time you came along, you were sort of a cultural barrier between the Japanese and the Caucasian society at a that's time right. when there wasn't that good relations. Yeah, you did a great job in all those areas. Well, I thought through judo, I could be able to uh, create a better relationship. Yeah. And, and you did. Thank you, Yosh. Thank you very much You're for being welcome. here. Thank you. All right, well, uh, coming up, what children and parents need to know about taking care of youngsters' oral health and keeping their smiles bright. That's coming up next.